Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems, a very biased collection as usual. Um, today I would like to talk a little bit about kind of combinatorial group theory. So there's a theorem which is named after quite a few people who have apparently discovered the same kind of type of theorem uh, independently, roughly in the 50s of the last century, and Novinkov, Boone and Britain. Okay, fine. Um, let me just call it the word problem. Uh, which is a bit easier. But anyway, um, the point is that sometimes life is not decidable. Huh? Sometimes something is really difficult. And usually in mathematics, what we do is we say, well, life is very difficult. So we kind of ignore that and we model everything on much easier models. And then the kind of the question is, are those much easier models actually decidable or not? Or what can we say about those much easier models? But of course, if those easy models are not decidable, you shouldn't expect too much to happen uh, in life. So life is way more complicated than mathematics and also way more complicated than this video. So stay tuned. Uh, it won't be so bad. There will be some really scary thing, but I will comment on that uh, later uh, as we go along. So let's have a look. So I want to, it's a very easy concept actually. Um, and we don't need, you actually don't even need to know what a group is. Um, so if you don't know what a group is, it doesn't really matter. So let me just say I have an alphabet, I have an alphabet of symbols, um, A, B, C, whatever, just an alphabet. An alphabet says I would like to form words, right, in my alphabet. So we'll do that in a second. Um, and you can think of this as being corresponding to some free group. So uh, a word, a group word, is some kind of finite concatenation of just symbols from, well, from A, B, C, D from our alphabet, but we also kind of take the inverses because we talk about groups here, but fine, that's, that's not a big problem. Uh, so let's do A, B. So just a very, very simple alphabet. I could have used zero or one. Uh, it's kind of the binary alphabet if you want, but since we have inverses anyway, I go for A, B. And the notation to not, well, because A inverse looks very similar to, to uh, A itself, uh, is that the inverse is given by the capital letter. That's just notation nonsense. Okay, so what are now words in this alphabet? Essentially everything you say, you see here. So you can jump A. So that's the blue arrow going uh, rightwards. You can jump A inverse. That's the blue arrow going leftwards. You can jump... Um, B, that's a, what is it, orange type arrow going upwards, or you can jump B inverse, which is a orange type arrow going downwards. So that's kind of your start. So the empty word is a word, and then you just concatenate by applying symbols. And you can keep on going. So you could jump, uh, whatever, let me try something. A, uh, B, A, something, 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 whatever. You can just jump around in this graph. So let's see what I did here. A, B, A, this is B inverse, so capital B, um, and then A again, and B again, and A again. So my word would be um, A, and then B, A, capital B, so B inverse, A, B, A, and you can just, do as many of them as you want, just form words. And except for some really trivial constellations, namely if you jump something like this, so A, A, which you can just, because A is A inverse, we can just cancel it out. So it's just empty. Up to that, in this case, just for everything you can form is a word. And kind of the fun begins if you don't have, well, you allow yourself kind of relations in the groups or in the words. So here's another group. So this one was a free group in two generators, and my generators are A and B, and I just described it as a word game. Yeah? Okay. Um, here's another group, Z squared. That's, uh, well, the group of the integer lattice, uh, Z squared. And I still have two generators, A and B, but now I have this relation, A, B equals B, A, right? That's true in... Um, z squared. So if you think of A as just being this guy, uh, this is supposed to be a zero here. So if you just think of A as being this guy and B being the second coordinate uh, standard vector, then you will easily see that both of them are just one one. 
And then kind of a little bit tricky, the multiplication uh, will be addition. But anyway, let's just go for it. Uh, but now, because look at this grid. So here we had this graph, which kind of splits of fractal, like going more and more and, and fractal, but never kind of comes back to itself. So the only kind of relation you have is a trivial relation. On a grid, there's a different relation. So if you, for example, walk like this, or you walk like this, this is just the same. Right? So here, uh, just seven symbols A and five symbols B. And here I have five symbols B and seven symbols A, but in a different order. But since the order here doesn't matter, these are really the same words. And in the graph, that's just, uh, you're running a loop, essentially. So you can talk about, since every group, that's kind of a formal statement here, uh, is a quotient of a free group. And let's assume something like finally generated or don't worry about that too much. Anyway, so we just get a notion of words for any group because you just have the same as before, just A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. Um, but now you might have some relations going on. Uh, so you might have that you write down two words. I mean, we already had a relation here, the jumping back and forth relation, but that's rather not exciting. You can always kind of do that. But now we can have more, very, very, very much more complicated relations in the groups. So we could have the two words are actually the same, but they look very different. And that's kind of the essence of the word problem. So whether we can decide whether two words are the same, although they look very different. And what you should think is there's some nice graph and kind of we want to compare various paths in that graph. And we want to do that in kind of a decidable way. Yeah. So we want to say, okay, th th this concatenation of arrows and this concatenation of arrows, they give the same result. And since we are mostly talking here about infinite graphs, this is not quite trivial, as we will see. Anyway, let me show you a finite example just to get started. Again, we have A, B as generators. And this is a dihedral group of order eight or the uh, symmetry group of the square. So what can you do with a square uh, symmetry group wise? Well, you could turn it like 90 de degrees in each step, that's the generator A. And that's why A to the fourth is zero. And you can just see that here in the middle square, for example, or in the outside square. Uh, so that's the operation A. And then there's the operation B, which is uh, the mirroring around kind of a middle axis, right? This keeps the square as well. And B, as you can see, doesn't have an arrow because it's self-invertible anyway. But now let's walk in the graph. So we could do something like, I claim this is true. So we can do something like A, B, so we end up here, or we could do a B, A, 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 and indeed, these are the same. So that's kind of the, the essence of the word problem. We have some graph and we have a concatenation of edges and we want to decide whether we really end at the same vertex or not. And turns out that this kind of simple sounding problem gets very delicate if you have like infinite things. For finite for finite graphs or groups or whatever, it's actually not so difficult or it's actually always decidable. So you can always do that. Um, keep in mind, or I haven't said that, so how, how can you keep it in mind? Let me try again. The point here is I'm not talking about efficiency. I don't care whether it will take a long, long time. As long as we can do it, it's fine. So that's what I count here. It's a matter of if we can do it or we can't do it. That's, that's the only thing that I care about here. Uh, just as an inside information, because before we go to the theorem, those graphs are called Cayley graphs. If you have never heard of Cayley graphs, well, it's just a graph that encodes words, so jumping around words in a group. OK, um, here's the theorem the word decidable problem theorem, the whatever Novikov, Abun, Britain's theorem, um, finitely presented groups with undecidable word problem exists. So finitely presentable just means you have only finitely uh, many different colored arrows. Note here that my graphs have different colored arrows. So you only have finitely many colors. This is not saying the graph is finite. So here we have finitely many colors, just red and blue, but the graph is clearly not finite. Uh, here we just, have, uh, for some silly reasons, uh, orange and blue as colors, still just two, but the graph is also, again, uh, infinite. So finitely presented just means finite number of colors. And there are really graphs where you just can't decide that. And can't decide really means that there's no algorithm to check that. So if you know something like um, Turing's Haltic problem, you can reduce this to Turing's halting problem. So you can really not decide it. There's no algorithm 
that kind of can decide whether a concatenation of edges and another concatenation of edges, whether they end up at the same vertex. So there are such groups. And I decided to give you one example of this group. And I'm not expecting you to remember it. I have no idea what's going on here anyway. So those groups tend to get a little bit complicated, as you can see. So this, this group has 10 generators, A, B, C, so it's 10 colors. A, B, C, D, E, P, Q, R, T, K. And it satisfies a bunch of relations. So this is an explicit example of a group with an undecidable word problem. Um, if you want to go ahead now, you can try to draw uh, the Cayley graph of it, it's not recommended as an exercise, but you could. So this is a group where you really can't decide um, whether the word problem, so the, the walking around in the graph actually works or not, or you can't decide whether two walks are the same, uh, and it's the same vertex. And that raises a question, how many groups are actually there out there where we can't decide? It, it's a very strange game. So let me go to the next slide because somehow um, it feels like for most groups, that's actually easy. So you can decide the word problem. This is why this is a theorem. It's not easy to find a counterexample. So not easy to find one of those groups, but this is somehow just a matter because kind of our brain is very biased and picks out certain types of groups. So roughly speaking, if we would write down a group randomly given by generators and relations, whatever that means, it probably will collapse, but let's say it won't collapse, then um, it, it very likely will be one of those crazy groups. And this is roughly related to this. Um, so I'm not quite sure. So, so usually in old texts or on an old globe. So this is part of an old globe. This is usually kind of hard to read for some reasons. But anyway, so what, what is written here is uh, Hick, Zund Draconis, which kind of means if you just imagine an old an old map. Uh, so what people did very often, whatever very often means. So you can you can really find that on old globes um, that they kind of have the known world somewhere, and then there are some some dragons somewhere else. So everything we don't know is a dragon essentially. And the point here is that I want to make with adding to groups is kind of the known groups as a known land, which is not really much, but that's where we are familiar with. That's where we're living, right? And the unknown groups is as a dragon. So they're out there and we've actually no idea what's going on. But we kind of then ignore them because we are living uh, on the known part and we're kind of ignoring the unknown part. In some sense, most groups should have an undecidable word problem. But in some other sense, we will somehow never really see them because we are living uh, away from the dragons. Right? So that's kind of kind of the point. Okay, um, the dragon analogy was just trying to say that very often, like for real numbers, the same thing happens uh, quite often. There's some really crazy real numbers that you just can't write down, but they somehow never appear in practice because our brain is so biased and likes to stay in the known world of nice real numbers like one, zero, pi or something. Uh, the golden ratio, the golden ratio is really nice anyway. Um, anyway, so for groups, it's kind of the same, but there are really beasts outside there where it's kind of hard to imagine how you can draw a graph and the computer can't decide whether two paths actually end in the same vertex. Or uh, if a computer can't decide, let's just say the brain is a computer, so the, the brain can't decide. It's kind of a little bit it's, it's, it's a bit surprising, I think, and that's why this is uh, uh, one of my favorite theorems. Uh, one of the dragons out there. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I also hope to see you next time.